Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. What I have for you today is the Skeleton Modified. I'm even going to mention how to do it in the two-tone, or three-tone, if you will, look. Here's a black and yellow one. Emerald green and yellow. Here's a navy blue and yellow. This is the one we'll be working on. I, um, I've been posting pictures in social media groups, and I had somebody ask the question, do you know any tips and tricks to keep you from having to pull every cord two or three times to get it to look right? And I told him, I said, pulling the cords two and three times, that is the trick. But there's a few other things in order to get this thing to look neat, clean, and tight. So, if you want to know, stick around, because I'm going to show you. Okay, folks, I'm back. I've set up. i got my jig set up. All right, before I go any further, two things. First off, shameless plug. Stitched eccentric fishtail and a stitched advanced mated Solomon. Link for those two tutorials will be in the cards. Okay, next thing. As I say in many of my videos, I am not a film maker. So with that said, I apologize for the lighting, the camera getting out of focus, me getting out of frame. All that kind of stuff. Sound quality, picture quality. I apologize. This, I don't, I'm not a filmmaker, but I know how to make a pair of cord bracelet. So, I, uh, say this also. I've been doing this for a while and I picked up tips and tricks and that's what I try to share. I don't necessarily give you the basic over here, under here, pull tight. I try to give you like I say, tips and tricks that I have picked up from doing this. Um, that's, that's why my videos are longer than normal. Your average video. It's because I try to explain what I'm actually doing. That way, you won't struggle as much. You can, you can benefit from the struggles I've already went through. Does that make sense? Okay. With all that said, uh, I've had a few people ask me about this one because they can't seem to get it to be neat, clean, and tight, or even. And I, was, I told them, I said, i got to make quite a few of these this week. I'll film one of them, and I'll see if I can't help. Okay, skeleton modified. See this 550, if I'm not mistaken. We'll give him credit for this one. Um... This is not a hard weave. The actual overs and unders are easy. It's simple. But to get it to work right, it can be tricky. A lot of people will struggle with this one because, like I, I said something, let's see, how, how do I put this in terms that will make sense? Tension consistency. I've, I've used this term before on my channel. If you've watched any of my videos, you've heard me say it. Tension consistency and also tension direction, I guess is the way I would label it. It's not, you have to pull everything tight. It, it's, it's, it's the tension. It's not wrenching it down. It's whatever force you put on this knot, the next repetition you got to put the same amount of force. Tension consistency. If you wrench it down as hard as you can, well, the next time you better wrench it down as hard as you can. Why? That way all the knots are the same. There's a lot of ways, trilobite, fishtail, these knots, you'll see the outside edge and it'll be boop, 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 look like a heart monitor. And that, and this, that's why. Because that's the main reason is because the tension's not the same. It's not that it's got to be heavy or light, it's just got to be the same amount. Every time you do it. Makes sense? But also, is the direction 
you're pulling your cords. Now that doesn't come in so much in this one, but in some weaves it does. It's not simply pulling the cords straight out to the sides. Sometimes you have to tension it or cinch the knot up by pulling it straight up or up this way or diagonally this way. Sometimes you have to pull it down, you know, at an angle. That, that too comes into play. And that is what they don't tell you on a lot of the YouTube videos. So that's what you can work with. When you, you figure out the overs and the unders, great. How do I pull it tight? It's not just pull tight. It's pull tight this direction and this cord first and then this cord and then you got to go back to this cord. Ah, see, other things don't take. That's the whole thing. And that's what I was trying to explain to somebody when he was asking me about my work here. Ah, let me throw this out there. What did I do with them? Here's a few that I made already. I, I, I probably, I showed this in the, in, the, in the intro. Let me throw these up here. Black and yellow. Pittsburgh, Oakland A's, black and, what is that, emerald green. And then here's what the one I've done in a two-tone color. Uh -oh. But you can see how they're all even, neat, clean, and tight. That's my motto. But the two-tone, I'll explain that. That's pretty simple. But there you go. Um. Okay. With all that said, here's the technical specs. It's a four core strand. If you don't know how to do a four core strand, I put the, I put a, put it in the cards, but I'll put it in the description below. Okay. I'm using a 20 mil, I thought I said this already. 20 millimeter navy blue silicone buckle. 20 millimeter equates to three quarter of an inch. Um, 12 feet of the primary cord which is the core strands, 12 feet, yellow. The other one is 8 feet of navy blue, right? Like I said, it's four core, four, four core strand. Go watch the video if you don't know how to do it, but I, briefly, cow hitch here, you run down, you do a double cow hitch, and you run back up, and I do this little knot that we've all seen it me do, right? Okay. Your, uh, your secondary cord, eight feet, halfway points right here, and you thread it through all these loops just below the metal of the buckle through these loops here. Let me zoom in just a little bit, and you can see what I'm talking about. All right. It's running through this cow hitch and through the top of these knots. That's all it is. Now, if you want to do it, have the middle two colors like this all you do is wait that's the wrong side there we go the top all you do is you know eight feet this actually let me say this this is for seven and three quarter inch wrist so you know take into consideration 12 feet eight feet seven and three quarter inch wrist and my add two on this because of the way I weave, is an inch and five-eighths. All right, with that said, if you're going to want to do a two-tone one like this, you would meld your two cords and height at the halfway point. You know, four feet, four feet of whatever color, meld it and put the meld right up in there. That way you have two cords. Make sense? That's all there is. All right, let's see. Okay, to weave this one, it's not that hard. Hopefully you can see all this. Let me see, can I zoom in one more time? All right. We're going to get these out of the way. We're going to kind of hold them up here for just a second. All you do is you take your two cords. You take the left side, you go underneath, and you come up through here. Pull out the slide. Take your right cord, you go underneath, and you come up through here. Alright. Now, just to make this a little easier. Okay, now. 
You could do this either way. You can start with either chord, but whichever one you start with, that's the one you're always going to start with as, as you go down, right? So I'm going to start with this right side. All right. We're going to go down through here. And then we're going to come up through right here. Right? I'm going to pull out the slack. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it on the other side. I'm going to bring this down. Go right down through here. And then we're going to come up through this loop. See how I've got that. There's your overs and unders. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting this knot to tighten up and to sit correctly. To sit straight and to be even and then consistent every time. Okay, I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to back out so you can see what I'm about to do. Now, it's a multi, you can't just pull, 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 pull. You got four chords. You can't just pull one, pull this one, pull this one and be done. You got to pull them in succession and you have to feel the knot it'll make sense when I show you when you go to try this listen to what I'm saying and do what I'm telling you and it will make sense take it your two secondaries kind of pull them up to the top take these two and kind of push them right and then just kind of give it a loose a loose cinch. That's all you're doing. You're not trying to get this tight. You're just getting it loose. And you take your fingers and push it up. Up toward the buckle. Pressure. And then this one. This one first. Why this one? Because it is, it's the one you went through here and it's underneath. Because if you try to do this one first, you're going to tighten it up, and it's going to cause res resistance or friction when you try to do this one. So you do this one first. Whatever your secondary chord is on this side, if you've started going, does that make sense? I started with my secondary chord from the right going toward the left, which is this chord. This is the one you pull first. If you're going to do it the other way first, then you would start with this one. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. This cord. Push it up and pull this one. And pull it. You can pull this thing as tight as you want. This is one of these knots you can pull as tight as you want. As long as you do it correctly. I know there are some you can't do it because it will capsize. Well this one has a tendency to capsize or distort the knot. But if you if you do it correctly, you can pull it tight. Pull this one tight. Then, this is the way I do it, while I'm still holding pressure with this finger, up this direction, I reach across and I pull this one. Alright? Then I'll get this one and pull it. And this cord will pull this little yellow right here. And then I'll get this yellow. And it'll tighten up this yellow on this side. Right? Now, just, just to show you this. Look at this little piece of yellow right here. Now watch. When I pull this, watch what happens to this yellow. See how it, it disappears down around there? Now reach back there. And feel it. There's a big old... <laughs> Lump. I'm not going to say not. There's a lump. A bump on the back. And it, it, that you don't want it that way. <coughs> so what you do, after you get it, it's pretty tight. You reach back over here again. And you go back to this cord. And you pull it. Straight up. And you'll notice that little lump will disappear. 
And then you do this side the same way. You pull it straight up toward the camera. And if you've got your finger back there where that bump is, you'll feel it. That bump goes away. And now it's pretty tight. You can feel these two yellows. And you're like, okay. Pretty tight. But you can always... And I, when I'm doing this myself, <clears throat> I'll, I'll just watch. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, there's our first one down. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to start with this one. Going underneath and up through here. Underneath and up through here. You're forming these two little loops. Now, this side first. Just the way I do it. You come across below all this, below this X that you've created right here. This X. Below that, you're going to go through right here. And then you're going to come up from the back side through this loop. Don't try to go around that way. Through the back side. And same thing with this one. You come over the top. Past the X. Down through the hole. And up through this loop. Hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, that's, that's the easy part. Now, these two, kind of cinch it just a little bit. A loose cinch. That's all you're doing. A loose cinch, just to kind of get the slack out so you can work with it. Now, I'll we'll reach up here. We're going to push it toward the bow. All right. Blue one first. And I'm putting some pressure. I'm holding it. I'm pushing it. This hand is pushing it that way as I'm pulling this way. I'm counteracting itself. You see what I'm saying? Same thing over here. And you see how it, it stretches that yellow out? That's the distortion, the capsizing I'm talking about. Then... I'll take my fingers above and below these cords. What I'm doing is I'm holding them and I'm pushing toward the down this way. I'm putting pressure that way. Uh, you know, counteracting me pulling here. Because I'm pulling it. I mean, you can see my hand shaking. I'm pulling it. Right? And like I said, when you pull those yellow ones, it causes this knot to kick around in the back side, kind of distort. Doesn't quite capsize, but it does distort. And you now reach up there. Feel the ones you just did. Or no, no, no. The ones you did, the first ones you did, and then feel the ones you just did. And you'll feel there's two big bumps back there. That's what you got to get rid of. So you grab these. Again, you put your fingers up here. I pull them straight up. <clears throat> I need to switch. You see what I'm saying? And as you do this, with that, you have these two fingers are pushing down against the force of you pulling this way. Does that make sense? But as you do it, that other finger, you can feel that knot on the back fall into place. It's a big bump right here. But when you go to pull it, you'll feel it just you're like, oh, it disappears. Yeah, it's not a bump now. But you always look. When you get done, look. Kind of feel these yellows. Now, it doesn't, it, not so much, because the first, we know the first weed never looks right. It's always a big gap right there, and it never wants to do right. But once we get a couple of them done, It'll make sense. 
Now, if you look, if you look at this, you've got two chords here and two chords here. These two chords that are in the middle are always going to be, this is if you're doing all one color. Two chords in the middle are always going to be the ones that go through the core strands first. These are the ones that are going to wrap around. But again, we'll do it again. Take this one. Go through here. Pull the slack out. This one goes underneath. Making the X on the back side and pulling the slack out. Alright. This one next. We come across the top. Remember that. Across the top. I'm going to go down through this last opening. And up from behind, from behind to this loop. And then this one is going to go across the top through this over here. And from behind through that loop. Now, separate your cords and just a loose cinch. Okay. Now we're going to push up this one first. Now I'm pulling with my hand and I'm pushing off here. Just however. But you'll see it tighten up right there. Do this side. Do this one. Do this one. Okay, you reach back, you can feel that that knot right there is all messed up. I can feel it. The one on this side in the back is messed up. But it'll it'll fix. So we're gonna reach up here, we're gonna pull this one straight up. We'll hold it. Putting pressure down and pull up. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Pulling toward the camera and holding back with these fingers. And that, you, you, you use your, what is it, your ring finger back here and you'll feel that knot go away. Or that bump disappear. And that's all there is to it. I reach up here. And see if your yellows, look at your yellows. The ones you, the previous ones you did and the ones you just, just did. Make sure they're in line. If they're not, like I can tell this bottom yellow one that I just did is sticking out further than the one I did before. So I'm going to grab this cord and just kind of give it a little bit of a tug. That way they'll, they'll both be in line. Same thing over here. Give it a little tug and it'll pull that yellow in just a little bit. But when you do that, you'll notice those little bumps come back on the back. So you kind of got to you got to feel for them. You know, that's that's the whole thing. You This is one of these it's not a hard weave to do over here, under here, great. But you've got to actually work with this knot. It's one of these knots you've got to work with. And here's another thing I'll show you. I do this quite often. <coughs> we see how you can see the yellow right in here. If you don't push this thing up like every single time, what will happen is you'll start getting gaps in here. Now, just the nature of the weave, you're going to have those gaps, especially when you go to to bend it around your wrist, you're going to see. But you're trying to keep it as tight as possible. I'll take my knotter's tool and stick it right here. I'm run it up. You see, I'm stick it down in there a pretty good ways, but use it and I'm pushing this way and it's causing the whole thing to move up. You can come over here on the other, you know, and all three, in between all three of your core, your core strands. But hold it down here, 
Pull back as you're pushing up. You're working this knot. You see, does you see what I'm saying? And it tightens it all up. It gets it tight. That's all there is to this. But you got to, it's not, like I've said, it's not over under pull. It, it's, there's, there's kind of an art to this. You just gotta mess with it. We'll do it again. We go underneath, starting with our primary yellow cord, underneath the back side, and we come up through the last slot. Underneath to that slot on the far side. Make your little loops. This one first. And, and I'll say this too. When you go to come over, look at the cord. Make sure there's not a twist in it because it has a tendency to, to get a twist in it right here. So we come over. We go down through this lot, last slot between the core strands. And then up through the back side. Over the top. And through this last one. And then this loop from the back side will come up through this loop. And a loose cinch. So it looks like there's a, a okay. Now we got it all there, but you see what I'm talking about? Look, look right here. You see how there's a gap, and you can see the yellow. That's what we're trying to prevent. Now you're going to be able to see it. There's no way around it. But you're trying to lessen as much as you can. So we're going to run our fingers up, pull this one. And I'll, I'll usually do it like this. I won't keep switching hands. All right. Pinch it here and hold pushing toward the surface and pull straight up. And now look. You see how this yellow, these two yellows are sticking, they're further in than the ones from before. See, that's what we gotta fix. And you feel back here, you'll feel this too big. Now that we've done a couple, reach up there and feel it. And then you'll feel, bang, there's two big bumps back there. It's because the knot, you're getting it so tight, it's causing it to wanna wrap around the back side. We don't want that. So again, we're gonna reach up here. And we're gonna pull this, holding it back, pull it straight up. Straight this direction. Do the same thing over here. You, like I said, you can use that finger to feel it. You'll feel what I'm talking about. It just flatten itself out. But now, so this one over here looks good. It's tight. It's yellow. It's tight. And it's lined up right. This one on this side, yeah, not so much. So we got to fix that. And we fix it by pulling this one. See, and every now and then, you know, just every now and then, instead of pulling this one straight up, you can pull it at an angle. That makes sense. Not straight toward the buckle, but angle it upwards. And what that does is that, that helps draw everything closer to that buckle. But when you do it, you got to make sure everything's sitting right. Now you could do it, push it up like this, or you can not as tall. And you reach up there and you can feel it. It's hard. That's all there is to this. It's just, you gotta get that knot to sit right. I'll do it one more time. Take the yellow. Go around the back, up through this last slot. Pull out the slot. 
Gorilla back, making the X. You're making an X right here on the back side of the course. Just pull out the slide. Over the top. And down through this slot right here. And then up through. Up through this loop. This direction. Alright. Take the other blue one. Over the top. I throw this last section. And this loop. Up through the back side of this loop. Take out the slack. Kind of push it up. Give it a loose cinch. To kind of, you know, get all the majority of the slack out. Now, we're going to push it up. Start with this one. Always start with this one. Now you can look at this and you can see there's two big bumps on the back. You've got to get rid of those. And these yellow cords are not uniform with the ones I've already done. We've got to get them uniform. So. Gonna we'll reach up here. And I'm pulling straight toward the camera and I'm holding it back. And I'm, now I'm gonna look at the yellows and compare them, make sure they're all the same. So this one's sticking out too far. And sometimes that yellow, instead of getting wrapped around the back side and being a big bump. It'll come, it'll wrap toward the front. So every now and then take it and look. You see how it's, it's not, all these look the same and this last one's out of whack. Every now and then lean, lean over and look at it. And you'll see. See so this side looks good. They all look uniform. This side, no. How do you fix it? You gotta pull this cord to straighten up this yellow knot. Sometimes you just push it into place. But that's that's what this is. This this knot has to be manhandled to get it to sit right and look right. It's, like I said, it's not hard. Over here, under here, pull. Yeah, but it's to get that knot to sit right. You got to mess with it. All right. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to this. It's basically manhandling it. Loose cinch, push it to the top. First one you tighten up is that blue one right there, and then this blue one, and then you go from there. Now they're all tight, but they're not sitting right. I'll we'll reach up here, push that one up. Push that one up and push that one up. And them bumps, they're huge on the back. I mean, this blue cord is supposed to be coming out straight toward the camera. It's actually coming out at an angle. That's what's causing that bump back there. So we... Now we look, lean to the side and look to make sure all these are straight. Lean over here to this side and look. They look pretty good actually. I'll do it again. I'm gonna just do it. And see what I'm doing.
First one, you pull tight. The other blue one, you pull it tight. And you, did you do your yellows? And it doesn't really matter which yellow you pull first. You just got to get them tight. Now, they're all tight. Everything's tight. But you got the two bumps on the back. You got to fix them. Straight toward the camera. Blue it. Straight toward the camera. Kind of work that thing. Pushing. I'm putting pressure on it toward the thing. Pushing it. Now, this is the point where you're going to look. Look at your yellows. That yellow's not sitting right right there. It doesn't look the same as the rest of them. So I'm going to kind of That one looks pretty good. See that straight? That yellow straight? That's all there is to this. You just got to manhandle that knot. You got to be patient with it. I know a lot of you've heard me say patience and attention to detail, and yeah, that's exactly what this is. But after you do it, if you know, it becomes second nature to you how to do all this. It's just like anything else. You do it a few times and now you see, look at that. Look at that. You see the big old huge gaps right there? Yeah, we don't want that. We're going to fix that. So this is where you would pull it. Instead of pulling it straight up, pull it at an angle. You know what I'm saying? Up. And it will help close in those gaps a little bit. Up and we got feel it, feel that yellow, feel it. It's sitting there, right? Not as tight as it could be. Give another little pin pull right there. Oh yeah. See, that's all there is to it. You just manhandling it. I mean, honestly, you just manhandle that thing. Loose cinch. Push it toward the buckle. This one first. And then this blue one. Now you notice how the yellows, they don't see it's not sitting right. That one right. If I can spin it, that one right there is not sitting right compared to the other. The other ones, they kind of look out of whack because I'm spinning the bracelet's twisting on me. But that bottom one is not sitting right. So you got to reach up here. Remember, this one goes to this yellow. Okay. Now I'm going to pull these, and we're going to get those bumps off the back. Well, look, these, the yellows, this one on this side looks good. This one on this side is sticking out a little bit. So let's pull it just a little bit. Get it to sit right. Feel it. Make sure everything's right. But that, that's all there is to this. You just got to keep doing that. You've got to tender, loving care on each one of these. It's the only way to get it to look right. To get it tight. Neat, clean, and tight. But uh, I'll do the rest of it when I get done. Um, I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish this one off. This one's not too hard to finish off. And I use the same principle of how to cut and burn a Solomon and hide the ends. I use that same principle on this one. It's, that's kind of the, the whole thing. Put, put all your cords, get them all around the backside. You know, potentially all in one place. 
Sometimes you can't do that. But get them all on the back side and cut and burn them. That way, all the burns, all the cut and burns are on the non-display side. This is the display side that's going to be seen. We don't want no cut and burns out here. We don't cut burns on the side. We want it to be neat and clean. But, like I say, I'll come back, show you how I finish it all. Hopefully that helped and explained it. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got it weaved out. Uh-oh, hang on. Got it weaved out. Let's see. Okay, now, I'm going to finish this thing up. And what I've got, what I've done, I'm going to leave it on the jig to do to do this. And then I'm going to take it off. But what I've got going on, uh-oh, I got that in the wrong spot. I can already see it. Hang on. Okay. Okay, what we're going to do, this is the last one, you know, the over, under, and all that. Bam. I'm going to tighten this up, then I'm going to show you how I finish this off. Notice I pulled the blue one first, right? And this, like I, like I say, fids. I, I highly recommend getting fids. Especially on this one. Okay. We got them two bumps back here. So we got to pull that blue straight up. And then pull this blue straight up. Now let me look at this. Hang on. Had to look at them last yellow ones. Okay, that's 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 how we're gonna finish it. I'm gonna show you how I do this. This is a tight fit, but it can be done. I'm gonna try to leave it on the jig. Now it's kind of hard for me to see this, but I'm gonna do this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we want to get all our cords. So you notice all our cords are coming out at the top. We notice it here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, we see how all the cords are coming out at the top. Well, if you watch my videos and you know me, I don't want that. I want them all around the back side. So we're going to try to keep with the, with the, you know, the nature of the weave. So what we're going to do is these, these two yellow ones, I'm going to kind of get them out of the way. We make sure I'm going to do this right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this blue one. The one I always start with, go over. And all we're going to do is we're going to go down through that same slot. Yeah. Same slot. Just blow that other blue. Let me do this so I can see. I lean up here so I can see. But you, you, you got to get it. It's a tight fit right through there. You're going below this blue one that's already here. Above this, but in between the two core strands right through there. Kind of keep an eye on the back side of it. I'm leaning over looking at the back to make sure that I'm not snagging any of my cords. And I'm telling you, that's a tight one right there. Okay, get it through there. And we can go ahead and cinch this one down. You notice I left out the make wrapping these around and making the X and all that. We'll leave that step out of this. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with this other one over here. We're going to get it down through this slot. But on this side, I'm going to turn it this way so I can see because I'm. I'm looking at it to make sure I'm not going to stick my fit through all these other cords because this is a tight fit. Okay, I haven't jammed it through anything. Here we go. It's through there now. Now we're going to pull it tight. Pull it 
pull this one tight. Okay. Now, see, it kind of keeps in the nature. And these two, we're just going to wrap them around. But one of them is going to get a double wrap. What I'm going to do here is... I'm going to take, the, let's see, I guess it really doesn't matter which one I do. I'm going to take this one. This is the way I normally do it, so I'm going to just continue with that method. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to wrap it all the way around the back side. And then guess where it's going to go? It's going to go right back through that spot. So we got to get another cord through there. So what you can do, all right, let's see if I can explain this. You got this cord, is this this blue and running at this angle, going through here, and this is it coming out, okay? That other one that's running up under it at this angle, that's it coming out. And we're going to try to get it down through where well, we've wrapped this around the back side. We're going to get this fed below Right in there, just above this hitch in between these two strands <laughs> through there. Right? And you're thinking, how in the world? Yep, I'm going to get it through there. That's why I left it on the jig, because that jig's holding it tight. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to pull it toward the top of the bracelet, and hopefully that will cre create us just enough space to get down in there, if that makes any sense. Now, normally, I've got this. I've got this whole jig angled up toward my face so I can see it. So, you know, work with me here. I can't quite see what I'm doing. Here, let me get back in frame. And this is the last one. And this is the tightest one. But we're going to get it through there. And I'm looking on the back side to make sure I jammed it through the cord. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Now if I can just get the fid to go through there. Here, I'll flip it over. If you, well, if you look right here, you'll see it. You see the tip of that fid coming out right there. I just got to get it through there. See, now it's through. I can just pull it. Okay, now we got everything where we want it. Now I'm going to take it off here. Let me back out. Now, I told you, neat, clean, and tight. See if this will do this. When I release this, if it'll release, sometimes I can't get it to release. I have to actually loosen the jig up. You'll, you'll hear it pop under the pressure. You hear it? Okay, now let's get, the jig, let's get our jig out of the way. Okay, now, I always make sure my table doesn't have anything of dust or anything on it. That way, when I display side, I flip it over down. I don't get dust and crumbs or, you know, what, what have you on there. Okay, so what we're going to do here. This one that we've wrapped right here. Let me zoom back in. This yellow that's wrapped around the back and going through that one we just stuck through there, this all tight as I'll get out. What we're going to do see how this yellow one's coming out? Get it up out of the way. This right here. I'm going to pull this around the back and take up that slack. And I'm going to kind of hold it with my finger. And here, here's the other end of it. I tell you, we, it's wrapping around. So we're going to pull this slack out. Not all of it, though. Right before we do, we're going to take this last yellow one. And we're going to tuck it up under here. Same principle as how to cut and burn a salmon and hide it. See what I'm saying? 
So I've got it going up under that one. And these two blues, they're already kind of in that general area. But they're all on the back side. We're about to cut and burn every one of them together. What we're going to do is this one right here. That we've it's come around and it's wrapped around this back side. And then it's went back through again. We're going to pull that. And we're going to pull it tight. And it's that one right there. I'm going to hold it to the table. See, it keeps it kind of uniform. It sticks with the, uh, uh, it's not focusing very well, but you get the idea. You're sticking with the, the whole, you know, nature of the wave, right? And we got them all right there together. I'm going to pull that tight one more time. Pull this one tight. These two, the two blues should already be pretty tight. Now we say, like I said, seven and a quarter inch wrist. I started with 12 feet back out and I'll show you. Most of you know these are one inch squares. So, you know, I, uh, I started with 12 feet of yellow and eight feet of this secondary navy blue. You see how much I got left. I got just enough to work with. Right. So we got everything tight. We're gonna pull it up. Now we're gonna do a cut and burn. Get your scissors. Get your smoothing tool. Get the lighter out. And for those of you who know, I've been using this leather stamp, which has a little little heart. After all, I'm paracords of kindness. I've been, if the cut and burn is big enough, I'll use it. Alright, so that's all we're going to do. Bam. Once you cut them, don't start moving it. You don't want anything to go back down in there. So just hold it up at an angle. There it is. Now, while it's still kind of warm, I'll come back. And I'll, I'll heat it again and kind of get it soft and do that leather stamp on it. You can kind of see it. Paracords of kindness. <coughs> Lay it out there. Now, I know it's kind of crooked, but we'll straighten it up. But since this was not made for my wrist, this was made for somebody else's wrist. Like I said, it's seven and three quarter inch. I, I do have a mandrel over here, sizing mandrel. Here, let me back out. There's a seven inch mark and the eight inch mark. I'd call that a fit on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. In fact, I'd like it to be a little bigger, which I bet you if I kind of round it off a little bit, it'll slide down on there a little bit more. 
That way it'll be, it'll be a little bit of, it won't be so, so snug that it leaves marks. I, you know, that's just me. And I try to make my products comfortable, not so tight that it's going to leave marks. But there you go. That's how I make a skeleton modified. And like I say, somebody just commented in one of the groups on Facebook about this very thing. They said, do you know any tips or tricks on, so you don't have to pull each cord two and three times. I told him, I said, that is the tip. I said, that is the trick. You have to do it that way. But, you know, it, it's like a lot of these weaves. It's not simply over here, under here, and pull tight. It's, you know, tension consistency tension direction and the order in which you pull the cords and then like i showed you you got to feel that thing especially the back side where the bump is feel it and look at those edges on the side make sure they all look the same as you're doing it makes sense but that's all there is to this one it's not that hard it just takes a little attention to detail a little loving care you know some some <laughs> how do you say it Aggressive negotiations, if you will. <laughs> we'll call it that, like that. But, with that, you know, what, what other two tours would you like to see me do and explain thoroughly on how I do them? Leave a comment below. But, with that, I'll end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat, keep it clean, and keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.